Mrs. Lemoyne again, and today we're going to be doing illustrative math, grade five, unit three, lesson 10, concepts of division. Our goal today is to think about the size of quotients. We're going to start off with a number talk. All right, when I look at 120 divided by 12, I notice that I have a 12 here and I have a 12 here. And I know that 12 divided by 12 is 1, and then I can add that 0 to make 10. I can also go and check that work by saying 10 times 12, right? All right, is 120. Let's move on to the next one. Oh, again, I noticed that 6 goes into 12, or 12 divided by 6 is 2, and I can add that there. All right, again, I noticed that 12 divided by 3 is 4, so this must be 40. Again, I can check all these by taking the quotient and multiplying it times the divisor. 3 times 0 is 0, 3 times 4 is 12. And our last one, again, 12 divided by 2 is 6. So this must be 60, and I can check that again, 60 times 2, 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 12, 6 is 12. All right. So why did the quotient get bigger with each problem? Well, I'm taking 120, and I'm dividing it into 12 groups. Then I'm going to have only 10 in each one. So if I divide it into smaller number of groups, I'll have more in each group, right? This one's only going to have six groups, so it's going to be 20. This one's only going to have three groups. So if this was 120 things, and I divided it into three groups, then I would have 40 here, 40 here, and 40 here, right? If I had 120 things and only divided into two groups, I would have two big groups of 60 two large groups of 60. So I can think about them all like that, right? If I had 120 here and I divided it into six groups, right, each one is going to have 20. So you can see that the group gets smaller. The more groups I have, the amount in each group gets smaller. All right. So we're just thinking about that. Ooh, what do you notice? What do you wonder? Well, I notice that there's a great big bowl of pretzels there and three empty bowls of pretzels. So I wonder if they're going to divide that bowl up into three. Let's see. Okay, we have a lot of situations here and we're going to order them from the greatest to the least based on the number of student um, pretzels each student will get. So, if I have three students and I'm sharing pretzels, we can go back to unit two for that, right? We could say 42 divided by three. So I'm dividing 42 into uh, by three students. So how much would each person get? Well, what times three will give me 42? Well, I can go over here and do that, right? 42. Three goes into four one time with one left over, and then I bring down that two. Three goes into 12 four times, so there's gonna be 14 pretzels per student. That's gonna help me with this one, isn't it? 42 pretzels divided by 14 students. Well, I just found out that three times 14 is 42, yes? So that means each student will only get three pretzels. And then I have three students equally sharing 24 pretzels. So 24 divided by 3 will give everybody eight pretzels apiece. Okay, here's another hard one. 45 divided by 3. So I'm going to have to go on the side and say 3 goes into 45. 3 goes into 4 one time with one left over. Bring down that 5. So 15. So this one, everybody gets 15 pretzels. This one is 42 divided by 7. Everybody's going to get 6 pretzels. 
if I have six pretzels and I'm dividing it between three friends, I'm only going to get two pretzels. And if I have 42 pretzels divided by six people, everybody's going to get seven pretzels. So we can number the, this to make them from least to greatest. So the most pretzels would be three students sharing 45. So that would be number one. And then three students sharing 42. So that's 14 and 15. The next highest one is three students care, sharing 24. And then six students equally sharing 42 would be four. And then six, seven students with sharing. And then 14 students. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. And then this one would be the last one. Um, they would get the least amount, the least amount. So we just had to worry about division to do that. Okay. Let's move on. That was a, a lot of practice in division. Are there any words or phrases that are important to include on our display after using that? Well, let's see. Are there any words or phrases? I might use words um, by adding or dividing, that kind of thing. So let's look at some other things. All right, here are all our three students. What is the same and what is different? Well, what is the same is that everybody is sharing three students. What's different is the amount of pretzels that those three students are sharing. How does the number of pretzels each person is sharing change in a situation? Well, let's look at that. So remember that, let me delete, delete that. Remember that the three students sharing 45 pretzels, each person was getting, was that again 14? Let's see, 14 times three. Nope, that was the 42, right? So each person was getting 14 here, each person was getting 15 here, each person was getting eight pretzels here, and each person was getting two pretzels there. So how does the number of pretzels change? The more pretzels you have, the more pretzels each person gets. I would say that, right? The same number of students are sharing different numbers of pretzels. It gets smaller the fewer their pretzels there are to share. So I only had six here to share. All right, here's some other ones. What is the same and what is different? In this one, we're all sharing the same amount of pretzel, the same amount of pretzel, but we have different numbers of students sharing them. So how does the number of pretzels each person gets change in this situation? So again, 42 pretzels, um, let's see, 14 into 42, wasn't that three? Yeah, so three pretzels each, this was six and this was seven. So how does the number of pretzels change? When fewer people share the same number of pretzels, each person gets more. So the fewer number of people in this case gets more pretzel than the last one, if we're all sharing the same amount of pretzels. All right, division patterns. Let's look at division patterns. Find the value of each expression. Find the value of each expression. Okay, so for this one, I don't know, it's not a math fact, so I can go over here, three goes into 36, three goes into three one time, one times three is three, Subtract, I get zero, and I bring down the six. What times three is six? Two times three is six with none left over. So this is 12. I know this is a math fact. 12 divided by three is four. Nine divided by three is three. Six divided by three is two. Three divided by three is one. And one divided by three is one third. So what patterns do you notice? What patterns do you notice? Well, all the problems are about dividing by three. 
the number that is being divided gets smaller, and so does the quotient, right? So 36 is bigger than 12, 12 is bigger than 4, this number is getting smaller, and this number is getting smaller. Okay? What else? Why is the quotient getting smaller? It's getting smaller because the number of things being shared is smaller, so there will be fewer in each group. So I'm sharing 36 things here, but I'm only sharing six things here. So I have less things to share. What do you know about the expression one-third divided by three? Well, I think it'll be smaller than one-third. It'll be one-third of one-third, right? It'll be one-third, and I'm going to have to divide that one-third into thirds. One-third of one-third. Oh, and it decided to draw a diagram. Well, there's your diagram that I drew, right? I would have to divide all of the thirds, one, two, three, one, two, three, yeah, into thirds. And there we go. There's my diagram of that. And it would be one-third of one-third. Oh, wait. Wouldn't, would it? Let's see. Let's go back a little bit. So I would take this third this third here, and I would divide it into thirds, and it would be one-third of one-third. So what is that, right? So here's the diagram. So that would be one out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it would be one-ninth. One-ninth. All right. Let's see what they have next for us. Why does the quotient get smaller as the dividend gets smaller? Well, there are a smaller number of things being split into the same number of groups, so there will be fewer in each group. Why is one-third divided by three going to be smaller than one-third? Because I'm taking that one-third, right? How do the, di how do the diagrams show one-third divided by third? So I'm taking that one, dividing it into three, thirds, so that's one-third, and then I'm going to divide that one-third into thirds. So I'm only talking about this piece right there, right? So that's one-third, here's my one-third, all of this, one-third divided by three. And then we know that that's going to be one out of nine, one-ninth. Right. Okay, share your ideas and questions about division from today's lesson. What do you still wonder about division? This is something you can um, share with your teacher. All right, what new idea did you have about division today? And what questions do you have about division today? So that's your cool down today. And you can, um, again, share that with your teacher and your classmates or your parents. All right, that's it for lesson five for today. I'm sorry, lesson 10, grade five, unit three. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and let's, I'll see you on the next one.